As the nation's hospitals and health systems continue to battle the ongoing public health emergency, now, more than ever, we must harness the collective power of our communities to champion changes that will advance health for every individual. Welcome to Advancing Health, a podcast from the American Hospital Association. I'm Tom Hederly, executive speechwriter for AHA. The Foster G. McGaw Prize recognizes hospitals and health systems that are leading the way through innovative collaborations that improve the health and well-being of everyone in their communities. While we were not able to present the prize last year due to the pandemic, the AHA is honored to bring you this podcast series to share the stories of our most recent recipients. Our moderator is Janet Porter, a member of the Foster McGaw Prize Committee. Today, she'll guide a discussion on how Foster McGaw Prize winner ProMedica leveraged community partnerships to address the social and economic issues that affect health status in the greater Toledo, Ohio area. Thank you, Tom. Hello, I'm Janet Porter, a professor of health policy and a member of the Foster McGaw Prize Committee for about 20 years now. Today, I'm really pleased to welcome Kate Sommerfeld, President of Social Determinants of Health at ProMedica, as we discuss the Foster McGaw prize-winning organization's programs that address the needs of all the communities it serves. Kate, thank you for joining me. Great to be here, Janet. Kate, can you provide a brief overview of the location, scope, and scale of ProMedica and your target service area? Thanks so much, Janet. Huge thanks to AHA. We're really honored to be the awardee of this prize. ProMedica is a health and well-being company, and so we have hospitals, uh, we have an insurance arm, we also have a post-acute business. And then over the last 10 years, we've really put the stake in the ground around diversifying healthcare and thinking differently about innovation. So very much investing in the social determinants, investing in how we change healthcare delivery. And so we have a national presence across about 30 states across the country. So let's talk about your comment about we finally put a stake in the ground. For most of our Foster McGaw winners, there was a pivotal moment when the leadership and the board embraced health improvement as their mission rather than delivery of outstanding medical care, sometimes because of a leadership change or a devastating trend in health outcomes in the area or just the story of one community member. What brought about ProMedica's epiphany? Yeah, Janet, it's a great question. About 10 years ago, and we've been on this journey for a very, very long time, it really became clear to us that we had to address hunger as a health issue. We had a lot of individuals, both patients, kids in our public school systems that were really struggling with hunger. So it started this long journey for us in thinking differently about healthcare and expanding the definition of health. Since that time, we've expanded beyond food and are really focused on long-term sustainable change, economic development, education, really changing the, the overall trajectory of health and well-being. But it was really rooted fundamentally in, in the real that hunger is a health issue and driven by our CEO, Randy Ostra. So this is a perfect segue into you talking about food insecurity because this is a big issue for our hospitals nationwide, and it's increasingly been targeted by hospitals as a way to keep patients healthy and prevent disease. So let's talk about how ProMedica is addressing food insecurity and healthy eating. Yeah, as I mentioned, Janet, the first area we really started to tackle was food insecurity and hunger. And, you know, it's such a tangible thing. You can provide an individual patient or a member food, and so it really is an important starting point. We, since that time, have done a lot of work in expanding. All of our patients and members and residents across the country are asked fundamentally as they come in to get get care for us around hunger. We use a two hunger screening vial dose sign uh, questionnaire. And then based on that, we're providing a lot of different interventions. Everything from a food prescription model where we're prescribing food as medicine. So just like we would prescribe medication or procedure, providers are actually prescribing food as medicine. In that model, we've been able to show that not only are, are we healthier, but we're also lowering cost. And so a lot of work on the back end to show the impact of food insecurity as it relates to healthcare costs and outcomes. We also 
do really creative projects, like we established a grocery store in what was a previously food, food desert. And since that time, we're helping other folks around the country also open nonprofit grocery stores. So it's really that expansion, thinking about food across a lot of different mediums, whether it's a, it's a food prescription program, grocery delivery. We're now working on a lot of models to do medically tailored meals and drop shipment of food. So really, hunger is an incredibly important health issue, and, and we're through a variety of different means tackling that. The breadth and depth of your commitment on food insecurity is really impressive. You know, Kate, one of the innovative things about the Foster McGaw Prize all along is that they've wanted to share best practices. And part of that was the recognition early on that innovative collaborations that improve health are key to really having community impact. It's one of the key components of applying for the Foster McGaw Prize. The Lenawee Health Network, founded by Prometica Bixby Hospital, sort of served as a catalyst for agencies to collaborate in meeting rural community health needs. Tell us more about this network, some of the major players involved, and how this collaborative effort provides and expands community resources. Yeah, one of the things we know, obviously, healthcare is an incredible and important player in community, but this work can't be solved in individual organizations or in individual silos. And so the Lenawee Health Network is a multi-sector network. There are about 25 different nonprofit government agencies that come together to not only collect and do the community health needs assessments, but also the community health improvement plan. And, you know, it's really just an incredible example of a collective impact model. The hospital operates as the backbone organization in a local community, and a lot of different work has come out of that. Everything from a mobile veggie that travels across our rural communities to provide food access for individuals that don't have transportation and really struggle with food insecurity. Recently, we also expanded and created a farm. So there's a farm attached to our new hospital campus and a lot of different projects and programs across sectors, transportation and addressing the opioid epidemic. Um, And since that time, the Lenaway Health Network has secured over $2 million. That's really based on this cross-sector collaboration, folks across sectors, government, public, private, nonprofits, coming together, understanding what the key needs in the local communities are, and then strategizing and braiding that funding So a lot of phenomenal work happening, obviously, both in the urban settings, but also in our rural footprint as well. You know, partnerships are key to every applicant who applies over the years. And so I think this is a great model for people to consider. You know, I was also touched in your application by the commitment ProMedica has made to help those with physical or intellectual disabilities and their families. And ProMedica established Caitlin's Cottage over eight years ago, almost 10 years ago, I think now, to provide respite care for those patients and their families. So please share for our audience how Caitlin's Cottage works. Yes, Caitlin's Cottage is a a needed resource in a rural community where there is not currently respite care. A lot of community partners came together to both raise the awareness, but also to create an environment that was warm, was home-like, and that parents and caregivers would feel comfortable dropping and having their, their loved ones cared for. There are professional staff that provide both clinical care, but also the ability to have different services connected. No one is denied respite if they can't pay. And so there's both a foundation component, we provide operating support for it as well. And then a lot of community partners come together. I think a great example of how we recognize need, but also brought together partners and started to braid funding, philanthropic dollars, community benefit dollars, operating dollars across sectors. So it's just an incredible example, so heartwarming. The community really understood the need, and then we're able to solve for that and create a long-term program that is sustainable. Thank you for describing that. So, you know, Kate, over the years we've seen applicants have a greater and greater appreciation of the role hospitals play in economic development and the communities they serve. But ProMedica has really gone big into economic development. So I want to talk about two of your initiatives. Let's start with how you thought about economic development specifically in Toledo with in the uptown neighborhood. And first of all, describe the neighborhood to the audience and then talk about what you've done in the uptown neighborhood. Well, we know place matters. 
And while clinical care remains really important to individual health and well-being, the physical place, the neighborhoods that individuals live in are, are incredibly important. And so we made a $50 million commitment in partnership with the Ebite family and our foundation to create a place-based model to focus on housing and economic development and food access. This was an expansion from our grocery store that we started in 2015. So we work with a lot of partners across the neighborhood and really, again, putting a place-based model at the center of health and well-being. One of the things that's been really important for Toledo as a, as a Rust Belt city, but also a city that's really trying to turn the corner economically, is that we have both a thriving downtown. Prometica has recently reinvested and relocated a lot of our employees to the downtown area to really drive and spur economic development. But the neighborhoods that are surrounding our downtown core are incredibly important as well. And so from both a strategy perspective, but also from an investment perspective, we have community health workers that are in the neighborhood. We recently launched and announced an innovation hub at the Jefferson Center in partnership with Bitwise, which is a company based in in California, focused on wealth building, coding, and tech. So really a strong emphasis on both economic development, but place, and doing that both from a leadership perspective, but also investing as well. So let's talk more. You mentioned briefly your commitment to the downtown riverfront area. Talk about the synergistic impact, your decision to relocate a lot of your staff to the downtown riverfront area has made. In addition to being a nonprofit, mission-based organization, we also really see ourselves as as an anchor institution. And obviously, there's a lot of literature and and discussion right now on the anchor institutions and the power that they can drive in, in community. And part of our core mission is our ability to drive both economic development, but to also use our resources, our staff, our investment, and our leverage and voice to really drive economic development. And so a few years ago, as we started to look and think about where our staff were located, how our physical buildings were located. We knew that the downtown core business district in Toledo since 2008 had seen really significant disinvestment. We had a lot of vacant properties, a lot of businesses that had left and and were really struggling. And so our board and our CEO made the strategic commitment to actually locate and, and relocate and reinvest in the downtown area. Since that time, we've seen incredible momentum. More and more businesses are are opening downtown. We have a riverfront, and we are opening in the process of a a Glass City River Walk. Huge investment. Our metro parks, we know parks are incredibly important as well, making very big investments across our downtown waterfront. So it's been incredible, I think, to, to think about healthcare's role in economic development. We played an important catalytic role. Everything from purchasing what was a a dilapidated hotel that was vacant and and transitioned um, many owners, Um, we actually purchased that hotel very, very quietly. We held it and were able to bring in the Marriott chain to reinvest in that. Again, thinking creatively about health, it's not only what happens in our hospitals, but it is what happens more broadly in our communities. And we've really taken a proactive anchor institution approach to, to really drive a lot of the health and well-being of our communities. Kate, I think the power of what ProMedica has done can be best illustrated by hospitals asking themselves the question, how can we serve as a catalyst for economic development? And what a tremendous impact you've had by asking that question. So we're doing this interview amidst a year now of being in a pandemic. And so let's talk, Kate, about what impact COVID-19 and the public health emergency it's created has had on the resources and programs you've been able to provide to your communities. And, And what advice can you share with other hospitals that are struggling to continue community program during this unprecedented time? Well, first of all, Janet, just a huge thank you and appreciation to the dedication of all of our caregivers and frontline workers. This has been uh, obviously a devastating year. And so, again, huge thank you and, and appreciation for that. You know, one of the things very early on that became apparent to us in the start of the pandemic was the, the need that our own employees had. And so, while we provide a lot of services out to community members, we also recognize that our employees that were on the front lines were struggling. And so very quickly, we started to think differently about how we could deploy our existing services and make sure that we were providing that support to our own employees. And so a few examples of that, 
really early on, we have a mobile food truck. And so we actually provide a a mini grocery store that travels throughout the community and and folks can come on that. They can actually purchase their groceries. So we ended up rerouting that mobile van and parked it outside of our hospitals. And so that staff may have been working a double shift or may have not had time to get to the grocery. Or obviously there were a lot of concerns about community spread. We're able to go on and actually purchase groceries both in the hospital locations, but also they were able to do that right after their shifts. We had a lot of support for our employees around housing, popped up a lot of different housing supports to make sure that individuals felt comfortable and and had a place that was close to where they lived. In addition, a lot of our services from our patient perspective, we started to innovate on our mobile grocery for our oncology patients that really had compromised immune systems, we stood up very quickly in short order a grocery delivery program. And so we were able to do all the ordering and online delivery for our oncology patients that were going through treatment, again, to make sure that they had access to healthy food, but also that we could provide that service. So a lot of really creative programs through the pandemic. I think one of the big highlights and things that we learned is the power of virtual services. So we have free financial coaching that we offer to our patients, everything from doing taxes to helping to build credit. We transitioned all of those services to virtual and used a tele model. So we've been deploying that telesocial service model through our financial wellness program since the pandemic. And not only have we increased services, but we also have increased outcomes. We will likely continue those virtual services. So it was really that opportunity for us to think differently. We had to, but it also, I think, will result in longstanding change in that innovation. So, you know, thinking really broadly about how we deliver services, where can we offer tele services around social determinants, and then what's the long-term impact of that over time. So it's been an incredible journey, but I do think a lot of the work, especially in in the communities we serve, will stand beyond the pandemic as, as that wraps down. Kate, I think you've given our listeners today a lot of good ideas. We would be remiss if we didn't talk about ProMedica's thought about place. You've mentioned place a couple times. And so ProMedica also has not has changed their model in terms of not just being concerned about those in Northwest Ohio, but about seven years ago, ProMedica partnered with the AARP Foundation to establish the Root Cause Coalition, which is committed to improving health by reversing the systemic root causes of health inequities for individuals and communities through cross-sector partnerships. I've had the pleasure of attending a Root Cause Coalition meeting, and it was amazing the diversity of people that were there, leaders in homelessness and food insecurity and housing and crime reduction. So just tell us a little bit about the way the Root Cause Coalition is improving health status across the country. The Root Cause Coalition, again, an incredible partnership with the AARP Foundation, it really provides cross-sector opportunities for folks to understand best practices. It's a membership organization focused on research and education and sharing those best practices. There is an annual conference every year. If you haven't been, would really encourage you to, to go on the website and find out, again, the best thought leaders around the country coming together, sharing best practices, understanding the trends. And in addition to the root cause, we also recently launched an impact fund in March of last year. And the goal of the impact fund is actually to understand and and to invest in the best practices around social determinants. We have a goal of raising about a billion dollars over the next eight years We will be announcing our first partnership very soon around housing with Green and Healthy Homes, which is an incredible nonprofit doing phenomenal work around the country. So we're working through a variety of different mediums, Root Cause Coalition, the Impact Fund. We also provide consulting services to folks around the country, whether they're interested in standing up grocery stores or food clinics or really figuring out how you embed mission and the social determinants into strategic plans. So a lot of different vehicles. We're really excited about what's happening around the country. And with ProMedica's expanded footprint with the acquisition of HCR Manor Care, really believe healthcare is on the right trajectory, that we're innovating, we're thinking differently, but it's also now the time. And so huge thank you again, Janet, for the leadership that AHA provides, the opportunity and the recognition through the Foster McGraw Prize. So, Kate, I want to say ProMedica is such a worthy recipient. And for those people who knew Foster McGaw, for whom the prize is named, I think they would be so thrilled to have him see 
an organization like Promatic are really living the model of a hospital creating a healthy community and healthy communities rather than just seeing their role as delivering medical care. And we're very pleased that you were the recipient of the Foster McGaugh Prize for 2020. So it was a pleasure to talk with you today, Kate. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, so much for the honor on behalf of ProMedica and all, all the country. Thank you for the work that AHA does and the recognition.